thought I would just quickly make another little film showing the actual game running, at least as far as I've got it at the moment. Um, one thing I should mention about trying to, to code something like this across multiple Arduinos, it actually gets quite tricky with the having multiple versions of the IDE open. Um, at the moment I've actually got three of them open, uh, four if you count the test code. Um, the reason for this is because as well as the main game, uh, which gets sent down to the first Arduino, and the display code, which gets sent to the second one, I also need another program, which is the program that stores all of the strings into the flash memory. So while I'm developing this, I keep changing the strings and I keep uh, modifying them and shifting things around. So what I need to do is first run that program on the, the main Arduino, and that then writes all the correct values into the flash memory. You then have to re-upload it with the, the actual game program, and then that will read back from the flash memory. Um, of course, when the game's running normally, you won't have to do this. It's, it's, you program the chip once, and then you will only ever read from it. But during this development phase, it's actually quite fiddly trying to upload code to the correct boards at the correct times. One of the problems with the IDE is there's actually only one set of settings. So even though you've got multiple windows open, uh, I can only have one serial port configured at a time. So because my two Arduino boards are actually slightly different and they're talking on different serial ports, every time I switch, I need to reconfigure which sort of board it is and what sort of port it is. So it can get a bit fiddly to having to do that. Um, and the other thing you have to watch is that you disconnect the serial line between the two boards while you're uploading them. Uh, if you don't do this, you end up with some rather cryptic errors in the IDE, uh, which can be quite confusing. So once you've actually got it all up and running, the game itself is running here. Um, it's sit just sitting there waiting for me to, to press a key. So if we press a key on the keypad, it's now prompting me to enter the firm name. Now, the way I can do this is through the numeric keypad, which has letters assigned to each button. Um, what I do is every time you press a key, it'll cycle through to the next letter assigned to that key. And it just does this in a loop. Uh, when you stop cycling, it, it waits for a timeout, which is set to about a second at the moment, and then it'll accept whatever letter was the last one you pressed and let you enter the next letter. So to enter a string, you just basically press the key to select the letter you want, wait a second, and it'll go to the next letter. And by doing this, you, you can build up a string. Um, I modified the keyboard itself, the keypad. So I got rid of the, the star and the hash keys, which they normally come with, and replaced them with a D key and an A key, which I use for accept and decline within the game. Um, I also use these keys for delete and accept when you're entering the string here. So if you hit the D key, it'll actually delete characters and let you re-enter them. So once you have a name chosen, you can accept that. Accept. One of the problems with having everything breadboarded is sometimes the wires go a little bit wobbly and stop working. So you just sort of prod around a bit and everything starts working again. Um, it's now asking me if I want to, to start with cash or guns. So you can select a number, either one or two. And then it basically displays the, the status. Now, one of the issues I've got is the, the screen resolution I'm using is, is, is way less than the original Apple II resolution. So I can't fit everything on the screen at once. Uh, the way I've got around this is to to reorganize the data on the screen a little bit and also um, I shift the screen up so that when it needs to display text it's only showing you the bottom part of this the stats screen uh, it basically just shows you the stats that are important when you're choosing what to buy and how much to buy so if we press the key again now um, it's now basically shifted the screen up and it's asking me if I want to play pay tribute um, so I can accept or decline. 
it's accepted so it's reduced my amount of cash and redisplayed the stats. Um, basically that's as far as I've got for now. I'm slowly going through the game bit by bit and replacing the, the simple print output that I had to test the game into my commands that will actually display the correct things on the screen. So at the moment it's a, a juggling game. I, I'm actually lucky that the the print commands that I'm replacing with my serial commands were actually larger. So as I replace each command, I'm actually saving a little bit of memory. But then the problem is I also have to add in extra control commands to do things like clear the screen or position things on the screen. And of course they use up memory. So it's going to be tricky to see if I actually have enough memory to get this to work. If not, I'm going to have to start looking at ways to optimize things. Um, I'm not sure what I can do there, but I'll I'll have to figure it out if I get stuck in that sort of corner. We'll see how it goes.